Coming up, we take a look at some of the work produced in Long Beach, California. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Good morning, Oviedo. I'm William Deem, here with the monthly main for February. This past month, a group from Roar TV traveled to the Student Television Network convention in Long Beach, California. While there, we produced a number of entries for competition, and this month, we want to share some of those with you. Most of what we have to show comes from our Crazy 8 broadcast. This was a broadcast produced in less than 8 hours with content based on the prompt, Express Yourself. We're going to break it piece by piece and share some of the stories produced. First up, Kayla Herbet visited a coffee shop where their owners value expression among Long Beach is known for its local businesses and unique dining. And a little coffee shop called Wide Eyes Open Palms, started by Angie and her wife Kat, is a true outlet for their shared passion. What inspired me to um, start Wide Eyes Open Palms was my love for coffee. I also love creating a community space for people. And uh, my wife, who's the chef, she has a passion, as well as I, for seasonal, locally sourced food. The food is incredible, the, the drinks are incredible, the vibe's incredible, the people are incredible, it's an all-inclusive place. And their love for their community and their business shines through each and every aspect of Wide Eyes Open Palms, and it keeps their customers coming back for more. I'm always, you know, trying to create a feeling with you know, the music, the cleanliness, the products that we provide, as well as I, I get to talk to most all the customers, so I get to really build relationships with the community. They put so much love and intention to every little aspect of this business. The Wide Eyes Open Palms Cafe has become a hot spot for the Long Beach community. And for its patrons, they can feel comfortable expressing who they truly are. So something that I also really appreciate is that it's an all-inclusive place, no matter what your gender or your vibe or your color. It's a very welcoming environment. We're just trying to be a community space for those like-minded people. And those like-minded people are and will always be more than welcome at the Wide Eyes Open Palms Cafe, a place full of expression, community, and best of all, friendship. For Roar TV, I'm Kaylin Herbet, reporting. February was Black History Month, and reporter Finn Cash visited the Long Beach Public Library to learn about a quilting project that allows for artistic expression while also learning more about diversity and culture. A pair of scissors, a stick of glue, a roll of tape are all part of a typical art project, but this craft in particular has a special meaning. Here at the Dana Branch of the Long Beach Public Library, we dive into an artistic activity honoring an African American cultural tradition. Quilt project that we created here. We have a table out here where they can pick up a kit. There's samples, there's information, there's materials, there's no limits, there's no rules. While Long Beach residents today can express themselves with a quilt square, the inspiration for this comes from a 19th century tradition in Alabama. So the G's Bend Quilters is a collective of women. They've been quilting together for generations since the 1800s. The patterns and way they did the quilts has been handed down through families. In celebration of Black History Month, the Long Beach Public Library has given people in the community an opportunity to show who they are. For Roar TV, I'm Finn Cash. Now, we also had a team go out in Long Beach to produce a PSA on how ordinary people express themselves. Here's what they produced. What makes me unique? I don't know. Let's say today um, I decided that I wanted to be kind of trendy. Edgy, I'm in LA. Um, I'm from Atlanta. So usually, you know, and I have been outside in a minute. So this is my first time in a long time putting on clothes. So I get up every day, try to be happy, even though things, you know, get down. And every day, this is number one. My creativity, my personality, and willingness to work with others. Um, I can really think about something and make it come into life, just in the blink of an eye. I love people. Um, I love to encourage and lift up people. I express myself by skateboarding and, I don't know, kicking it with friends. I guess I'm a curious person, so I meet a lot of people. Determination, motivation, 
education, empowerment, encouragement. Those are the things that I like to do. So I believe that that makes me unique because I take that with me everywhere and I try to share it with everybody. I like my family. Well, I love my family. It's things like that that show you that no matter who you are, you're unique in your own way. Anyway, so everything you just saw came from that Crazy A broadcast as mentioned before. I'm happy to let you know that our team placed third in the entire country for the overall product. It's only the second time that Roar TV has ever managed to place in this category before. Now, for a couple more entries we produced. Caroline Krivenos and Carmen Longhurst produced a commentary based on the prompt, Expanding Test Optional College Admissions. With the 2022 school year coming to a close in just a few months, the weight of college decisions rests on the shoulders of the class of seniors. In the four years of high school preparing them for their shift to upper education, schools have granted all students the same opportunity to succeed in the tests required for admission into many universities. However, this isn't necessarily the case. Standardized testing used for college admissions are proven to inadequately affect minorities and students in lower income areas. According to Brookings Institute, black and Hispanic students routinely score lower on the math section of the SAT in comparison to their white and Asian counterparts. This results in a larger racial gap due to the exclusion of minorities in major universities. Additionally, students from low income areas lack the access and materials for college preparatory classes. As stated by Forbes, SAT takers with a family income of over $100,000 are more than twice as likely to have a combined score of $1,400 to $1,600 than if they had a family income under $50,000. SAT prep can also cost around $50 to $2,000 per student, depending on how much they're willing to spend. This disproportionately affects minorities and lower income students who are discouraged from utilizing these useful practices that have a large impact on their final score. This connotates the negative stigma that having money equates to intelligence. By making tests like SAT optional for college admission, these racist and classist biases can be eradicated to make room for more equal opportunities in higher education. For Student Television Network, I'm Caroline Krivenos. And I'm Carmen Longhurst reporting. Personal vlog is a relatively new category at the STN convention. A reporter, Matthew Manorino, produced this entry on the prompt, Things I Can't Leave Home Without. Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Manorino, and today I'm going to be taking a little walk, and I'm going to be showing you while I'm at it, all the things that I can't leave home without. First up, One second, please. So, number one, little, very simple cotton mask for, to combat COVID-19. It's no N95, but it'll definitely work. It's form-fitting, doesn't tug on the ears too much. It's real simple, but it's nice and it's comfortable. Okay, we're coming up on the elevators. But the weird thing about the elevators is that they have this key card thing, and they don't never make you scan it. I always keep my key card with me. I keep it in my wallet. Second on the list of things I can't leave home without but seem to keep leaving is the good old wallet. Nice standard trifold, got cash, insurance, that room card I was talking about, and some gift cards, and even my driver's license, which is pretty important. Okay, so the elevators weren't quite working, so I'm gonna have to take down 10 flights of stairs to get to the lobby, which I don't like, I don't want to do, and they're kind of rickety old and only here for, you know, fire law, but here we are. What? Oh, found something else I forgot. Third up on things I can't leave my home without, we got the nice pair of sneakers right here. Basically, I got them for $25. They're nice, they're comfortable, they'll protect you from any dust, debris, used hypodermic needles lying around California's nice, beautiful beaches. Anything you'd really need, and they serve their job well, so I can't really complain. So that pretty much concludes my top three things that I cannot live without. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I feel like I'm... My phone. After watching that, I just realized I left home without my wallet. Let's not worry about that. Finally, before we go, in addition to our Crazy 8 broadcast, we had a team place fifth in the nation for a silent film. This category, like the two you just saw, had a time limit of six hours for the team to write, record, and edit. Their prompt was, this isn't what it looks like. 
as you watch, put on your detective caps and see if you can predict what the misperception is going to be. Alrighty, that's it for this month's edition of Monthly Maine. I'm William Deem, have a fantastic March, an exciting spring break, and you know I gotta say it, so say it with me, Go Lions!